the Palestinians' duty to be part of the resistance against the occupation, because we need to be free, and we will not be free if we do not resist the occupation. Where security and resistance meet is not limited by age. Light recently shed by the Israeli human rights group at Selim points out one of the most controversial issues surrounding the Israeli military and their conduct in regards to squashing occupation resistance, the detention of minors. The military juvenile court was officially launched on the 29th of July, 2009, and initially operated on what was considered a temporary order until it was made permanent in 2013, all the while with the stated aim of protecting the rights of minors. The most common arrests occur as a result of participating in clashes, such as throwing stones at soldiers, and a common sentence ranges from six months to a year. Over the last five years, adjustments in policy have been made, such as raising the maximum age of minors to 18 from 16. But other amendments were made, such as improving prison conditions. Yael Stein is a human rights lawyer and the researcher of the Betzelem Report, and she stresses that the fundamental flaws that exist within the detention system remain not only prevalent, but unaddressed, as well as systematically undercutting the minors' chances for freedom by using the bureaucracy against them. So the military juvenile court actually doesn't deal with evidence or interrogating the witnesses or letting the minors refute the allegations of the persecution. We are not there at all. I mean, it's the case is being closed with plea bargains. Plea bargain is, was always the, the very uh, common in the military court, and it's the same with adults. According to the report, after the supposed adjustments have been made, 95% of the cases involving minors resulted in convictions largely attributed to plea bargains. That same report also claims that 90% reported that the interrogators did not let them see or speak to an attorney, and the plea agreement itself was in Hebrew, which the majority of the minors don't speak, while the recorded confession is usually in Arabic, forcing the judges to rely on the signed document. But it's not just the way plea bargains are carried out. Stein also criticizes the courts and the system separation of minors from their families. Mohammed Hatem is 15 years old and was released four months ago after serving a six-month sentence in juvenile prison for throwing rocks at soldiers during a protest. And his story collaborates with countless others. I got arrested for throwing rocks at soldiers. When they arrested me, they beat me up badly. I went to the hospital. They did checkups and removed blood and gave me stitches. There's nothing they didn't beat me with. They used their hands, their legs, their weapons. I'm happy I got to experience prison life. But on the other hand, I was away from my family for a long time. The Ministry of Justice declined our request for an interview, but did claim the figures as reported by Betzelem to be inaccurate and misrepresentative. However, after the changes in the system were made in 2013, in addition to emphasizing the need to protect the liberties of minors, the ministry did release this statement alluding to the complications Israeli security forces face. The presence of terrorist organizations is widely felt in the West Bank. One of their key motives is to instill a sense of hatred against the state of Israel and its citizens through indoctrination of the population starting in preschool and continuing all the way to adulthood. This education leads to regular violent activities, ranging from throwing stones and Molotov cocktails to armed attacks and violent terrorist activities targeted against military personnel and citizens alike. The danger and damage caused by their actions is usually the same as if acts are performed by adults. If the occupying state is violating the rights of the minor throughout the process, and we don't speak about only one minor, but hundreds of minors a year that are going through the same system, hundreds of minors a year that their rights are being routinely and systematically being violated for months, um, common sense, what, what are the consequences of this kind of process? <laughs> And some experts argue that the way the system's built increases what they call radicalization. And it's attributed to a degree of apathy for the prisoners and their conditions. In Israel, we still have an issue. Are we going to invest in people that are, in the end, will be terrorists? And mostly the, the answer is no. Dakar Elat spent his career working in the prison system, analyzing what are the most efficient methods of both retribution, and rehabilitation. 
if you want to deal with it, you have to invest, because you have to invest in education, in welfare, you have to invest in works, you have to invest in transportation, you have to invest money. So what are the long-term implications of arresting such large numbers of people during their formidable years, and how does that affect the larger society as a whole? This teenager, or this little boy, he has lost a year at school. So he's here back from his colleagues and everything. And this might encourage him to continue that way, not to go back to school. And many has done that. They never got back to school after being released from jail. Lifelong activist Yunus Arar speaks to something, although reactionary, but ever more ingrained. I was 16 years old and I went to jail for five months for throwing a stone, come on. And his experience, he says, is similar to that of Mohammed's and many others. Uh, they will hear in you terms, new terminology, they will be learned uh, how to resist the occupation and how urgent it is for Palestinians to continue resisting the occupation. So inside jail, they built inside them the resistance culture, the revolution culture. So he comes out of jail, knows what's really happening on the ground and already and already uh, he's willing to be part of the revolution system or a resistance system. I'm not sure that you can have like this enlightened occupation. I mean, it's by definition that when you have such a long occupation, by definition, you will have these human rights violations. It's not something that disconnected. It, you can't have an occupation and continue protecting human rights of the, of, of the people that you occupy.